Hello once again, my name is Brother McGill, and we're back with another lesson of words of comfort from the Bible. And before we begin, I always like to say thank y'all for those who watch. I like to say thank y'all for those who, who tune in. I pray you stay fast in God's word. You never give up on your eternal soul and keep doing the things that you're doing to make your election sure come judgment day. There's going to be no doubt in your mind. I made my lesson sure now here on this earth. Right now, keep staying in God's word and make your election sure come judgment day, like it says in the book of Peter. I also like to take some time out of there and say for those going through a terrible time, the loss of a loved one behind the coronavirus, the deadly disease that's killing thousands of people a day. Now it's a day now. I like to say I'm so sorry. I know it's a terrible uh, loss to lose a loved one, and I'm so sorry to hear that. I also want to say for those who go through poverty behind it, who have lost their job, who are struggling to put food on the table to pay their they, uh, they bills, and, and going through a lot. You know what I mean? I hate to see the I hate to see kids go through that. Anybody go through that? But I want to, I want to say I'm so sorry to hear that, and I do really do pray for y'all each and every day. That you stay strong, but never give up on God. Don't let Satan have a victory over your soul, no matter what. And things going to happen. Even though, like it says in the Bible, even though it rains, it rains with uh, good and the bad, things is going to happen out here. So we got to stay strong and stay focused with God, no matter what goes on. Even though that things happen in my life that I get upset and get mad about, but I still, but we still got to stay focused, no matter what. Uh, when I tell you that, I tell myself that as well. Now, by me saying that, I want to open up with a word of prayer, and I want to talk about some things that have been, uh, been going on in this world about Christmas. So, I want to talk about that, but before I do that, let me open up with a word of prayer. <clears throat> Gracious Father, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, once again, dear Lord, we want to thank you for letting us come together, dear Lord, to worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you for all the things that you do for us, working us up this morning. Give us air to breathe, dear Lord, food to eat, dear Lord, and close our back. We thank you so much for all these things. Yeah. And we know so many people out here going through a terrible time behind the coronavirus. And may you help them with bad time and bless them with good time, dear Lord. Give them things that bite to their knees. Help those, Father God, those that are really, really out here that believe in you and trust in you and believe in saving of the soul. Help us to stay fast from evil in your word and stay fast, uh, stay fast, dear Lord. Never give up on eternal uh, soul, dear Lord. Never give up, Father God. This world is so corrupt and full with evilness and hatred and back by the line. It's hard to trust anyone these days, Father God. So why we need you each and every day, dear Lord. We need to stay in your word. We need to grow in your word. We need to understand, dear Lord, that without you, we ain't nothing. With you, we are everything, Father God. So that's what keeps us strong each and every day, your word. So we thank you for everything, Father God. And help us, dear Lord, to keep our fight for salvation, righteousness in your holy name. Never give up. We pray all these prayers to you, Father God, because you know you are the apple of the maker, Lord, Lord, King, and King. And all things are possible, dear Lord, with you. And you also say all things possible to the believer. So, dear Lord, help us all to understand that what we need to do, we've got to do our part. We want to see the kingdom of heaven and have eternal life. And these prayers we pray to you in your most divine holy name. Amen. Amen. I'd like to go over something with you, share something with you, because a lot of people out here or get deceived by a man uh, and what the Bible say about Christmas and the Bible don't mention nothing about Christmas and Jesus Christ tells us only one way how we can show him that we love him only one way not two or three or four or five six or seven ways but only one way but see I, I'm saying this because I have been in a lot of churches and I have seen this that how man would take Christmas and put it into the Bible and try to, and, and to be deceiving others, you know, right? Like, deceiving people and not actually telling them the true meaning of what God's words actually saying. So we're going to go through some scriptures so you can see for yourself, not twist the scriptures around for my own benefit. I want you to study with me, study these scriptures, but believe what I say, but believe what the word of God tells you. Not what I say, but what the word of God says. So by me saying that, Turn with me to Matthew chapter 2, 1 through 11. That is Matthew 
chapter 2, 1 through 11. Once again, that is Matthew chapter 2, 1 through 11. And sister, you might read that for me, and I'm probably stopping you, cutting you off, you don't mind? Okay. If I have to. All right. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. And though Bethlehem in the land of Judah art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. <coughs> then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented him with gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. Okay, thank you so much. I ain't had to stop you. Thank you. Well, no way in the Bible it tells us actually date when Jesus was born. No way in the Bible. That is a book of Mark. That is a, a book of Luke. That's a, a book of John. I mean, the Gospel of John. It nowhere it tells us that uh, what day that actually Jesus was born. And it also tells us what the birth of Christ. They came and gave him gifts, you know, they gave him gifts of his birth, you know, right? Man took this Christmas, put it into the Bible, and now love of money is the root of all evil. The love of money, because money has no soul, the love of money is the root of all evil, and turn and twist it all the way around to benefit them. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that nothing wrong to have Christmas for your family. Christmas is your job, I'm not saying that. But they should not mix it with Christ's birthday because no one know when Christ was born. But Jesus Christ clearly tells us how we can actually love him. You know what? Right? How we can love him and show that we love him. And not like I said, not all in different ways, you know what? Right? Run up and down, screaming and holler on the pulpit. You know, I right? scream and holler through the uh, the aisleways, uh, jump up and jump up and down, you know what I mean? All the other stuff, you know. Right? It'll get you nowhere. Only one way Jesus Christ told us how we can love him, and I'm about to show you that. Give it a little bit. Now stay with me. Turn to me to John chapter 1, 1 through 14. That John chapter 1, 1 through 14. That's gospel John chapter 1, 1 through 14. And like I said before, be not deceived. Don't be, don't be deceived by me. No one else, no one else out here. Then let's go with the word of God, what the word of God say. Not twisting scriptures, showing you scriptures. Let's go with the word of God say. She won't get it wrong. You will never be wrong with what the word of God say. So we said for the God, when your word say this God, your word say this God, and right, we said in front of God. In judgment. But we all have to. That once again, that John chapter 1, 1 through 14. And I know we had read this before, one of the lessons before, but it's 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 uh Scripture to what we're talking about right now. Let me get there. That is John, Gospel of John, chapter 1, 1 through 14. And it reads, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, 
and the Word was God. So the Word was with God in the beginning. The same was in the beginning with God. What was in the beginning with God? The Word. All things was made by Him. Made by who? God. And without Him, not that was. I'm sorry. And without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life. And the light was the light of man. And the light shined in darkness, and the darkness commonly hid it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not the light, but was sent to bear witness of the light, that was a true light which lightened every man that came into this world. He was in his world, who was in his world? God, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him to, uh, to them gave, gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which was born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh. Remember, the word was God in the beginning. And dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. And his only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, which is Jesus Christ. So the word was made flesh. And remember now, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word God. And the word was made flesh. Okay, turn to me to John 14. 1524. And when the word became flesh, who was that? Jesus Christ. And Jesus is the word. When the word was made flesh, that was Jesus Christ. And he was in the beginning with God. Now look at uh, Gospel of John, chapter 14. Gospel of John, chapter 14, 15 through 24. Listen to it very, very carefully. That is Gospel of John, chapter 14, 15 through 24. And it reads, uh, If you love me, keep my commandments. This is Jesus Christ saying this to the disciples. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth. Who the world cannot receive because it seen him not, neither do they know him, but you know him because he dwell with you and shall be with you, be with you. So I go back to the 16 again, and I pray, and I will pray the Father, he send you another comforter. The comforter is the Holy Ghost. Look at uh, Gospel John 14, 26, that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth. God the Spirit, Jesus Christ said, and Jesus Christ said, a uh, Gospel John. Uh, 1717, that God died, 1717, the word is the truth. And Jesus Christ also said uh, that the words of spirit and it's life. So I have the word in me, I should have the spirit in me. Okay. Let's keep on going. Verse 17. Um, yeah, even the spirit of truth who the world cannot receive because I see him not, neither know him, but you know him because he dwells with you. And he shall be with you. And while the Bible let the word of Christ dwell with you richly, because the word of Christ dwelling in you, the Spirit is dwelling in you, because why? The word is the Spirit, Jesus Christ said. Okay. That's Colossians 3.16 that says that. Verse 18. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world see me no more. But you see me, because I live, you shall live also. At that day, you shall know that I am in the Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that had my commandments and keepeth them, he is the one that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved by my Father, and I will love him, and I will manifest myself unto him. This is very closely. Judas said unto him, Not a cross, but Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not the whole world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and I will come up to him, and we will make a boy with him. That's how he keeps his commandments, by keeping his word. Okay, keep his word, keep his commandments. If I don't know his word, 
I cannot keep his commandments. Let me explain something to you. Jesus Christ said the only way that you can love him, show that you love him, is by keeping his word. I'm not saying once again, you can't have, you can't go out here, you can uh, have a, uh, a Christmas party or for your family. It's your job. Christmas party is your job for your family. Huh? I'm not saying that. I'm saying Jesus Christ is the only way you can show him that you love him. It's by keeping his word. That's it. You can scream and shout. You can do flip dance on, on the pulpit. I have seen a lot of crazy stuff on the pulpit. You can scream and holler all you want to. That's not going to do you no good. Jesus Christ said the only way you show him that you love him by keeping his word. So people go out here and take, and take Christmas and put it in. Put it in with uh, Jesus Christ's birthday. Jesus Christ said, well, and he said nothing about his birthday. He said, keep my word. That shows you that you love me. But see, that's how man twists scriptures on people. And if you're not following the word of God, then you won't know that. Because I wasn't following the word of God. So I thought uh, uh, December 25th was God, Jesus Christ's birthday. I didn't know. Right? I ain't because I didn't know the Bible. You know what I mean? I, I didn't know. I thought it was a birthday. I, I thought it was his Bible. Okay. I thought it was his birthday. Because I did not know the word of God. But as stand fast, stand in God's word, stand in God's word, and pray, and ask for wisdom and knowledge and understanding of his word, he gives it to you. I help you to understand what the true meaning of his word means. And he will help you, he, and he will guide you. This is the light of the glorious gospel, and he will guide you through his word. If you really believe in him, but you gotta obey as well, be obedient. But yet and still though, like I was like I was saying. The only way you can show Jesus Christ that you love him, that you care for him, that he's uh, in your heart, is by only one way, by keeping his word. All the other stuff out here is all man. And like I say again, we got know some out there who say, oh, he said, oh, do this, do this. No, I'm saying there's nothing wrong having Christmas with, at, at your house. You know what I mean? Ain't nothing wrong giving a gift to someone. You know what I mean? Ain't nothing wrong with that, but they should not put this, the Christmas, with the Bible, because they are they are deceiving people. No one knows where Jesus Christ was born. I don't know. You know what I mean? No one knows that. But so, so why Jesus Christ clearly tells us, keep my word. Then I know that you love me. And you keep my word. You can't keep his word if you don't know his word. So don't think that I'm going to heaven because I celebrate Jesus Christ's birthday. Or I believe I'm going every birthday. I have a good big celebration of Jesus Christ's birthday. No. Love him by keeping his word. Let's move on. Look at Colossians. Colossians. So before I go to Colossians, look, uh, Jesus, I love Jesus. How, how can I love, show Jesus that I love him? Only by keeping his word. Only by keeping his word. Look at Colossians. Chapter 2, 8 through 9. That's Colossians chapter 2, 8 through 9. And be not deceived, Colossians chapter 2. 8 through 9. That's Colossians chapter 2, 8 through 9. And it reads. Let me get there. That is Colossians chapter 2. Tradition of man and the rudiments of this world and not after Christ. For in him, in who? Christ, dwell in all the fullness of God have bodily. In Christ. Because why? First John chapter 5, verse 7. The Father, the Word, which is Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost are all three on one. The three Godhead, not Godheads, Godhead, the Father, the Word, which is Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost, all three on one. That is 1 John chapter 5, verse 7. So if I let the Word of Christ dwell in me, the Father will be in me. The Son will be in me because he's the Word. And the Holy Ghost will be in me because they're all three on one. But what I have with this in me, the word of God in me, 
I don't have the Father in me. I don't have the Son in me. I don't have the Holy Ghost in me. But Jesus Christ, it says, Jesus Christ, if I keep Jesus Christ's word, I put this word inside of me. Then the Father, the Son, who is the Word, and the Holy Ghost, all three in one. That is First John chapter five and verse seven. First John chapter five, verse seven. And that's how the Holy Ghost is in you. Don't let no one else, no one else, not even me. Let the Bible tell you how God is in you. Not no one else, but the Bible tell you that. Because if you don't, man will tell you anything. Trust me. I've been there. I've been there. I have heard what man say this and say this and say that. And I would believe in it too. But my life never will change it. I believe in everything what these people are telling me. But my life never will change it. So I came to God work my, for myself and stay in it and stay in it and stay in it and grow in God's word. The New Testament. Ain't nothing wrong with reading the Old Testament, but we live in the New Testament. Ain't nothing wrong with going back, study, reading the Old Testament. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But we live in the New Testament Jesus Christ bought us. And that, which starts the book of Matthew in, in the Revelation. And that's how God turned my life around. He turned my life around because why? I changed my life around. I trying to stay in God's Word. That's why you that's why you start seeing a difference in your lifestyle because why? The Father. The word is in you, the Father is in you. The Son is in you, he, he's the word and the Holy Ghost in you. And he and he's guiding you. And he's he guiding you and he's growing you and he's growing you in the word. That's why Second Peter chapter one, verse two to uh, first Peter, I'm sorry, first Peter chapter two and verse one tells us uh, first Peter chapter two and verse one tells us, one through two tells us. We need the word to grow. That is First Peter chapter two, one through two. We need the word to grow. If that word is inside of you, all three are inside of you. Don't let no one tell you. Like we got through reading Colossians again. And read that one more time to you. Verse eight: Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit and the tradition of man and the rudiments of this world. And not after Christ. How can we have the Christ? Well, Christ is a word. So if I keep his word, I'm after Christ. I'm following high Christ. And, and, and ye are completed in him. All right? Which we completed. Okay, you got Christ in you. You got the word and you got Christ in you. Which is the head of all principality and power. That's verse 10. The verse 9 tells us, for in him put all the forces of the Godhead bodily in Christ. The Father, the Word, the Holy Ghost, all three in one. I pray, don't let no one deceive you, not even me. And I pray you stay in God's Word because, trust me, as man's out here, this world is so evil and so terrible and so much lying on this social media. I, I, I see it. I see, I see all this fake stuff all the time. I'm like, man, they are not teaching the truth. They are, all, all the people tell you stuff for because they want money out of your pocket. They are not teaching you the truth, meaning of God's word. I teach sound doctrine strictly from the Bible. That sound teaching strictly from the Bible. I pray if you want to keep on growing in God's word with me, go to our videos. You know, right? Hit hit uh, hit the uh, subscribe button. I think that Terry we get a Terry we get a sound doctrine the word of God. Then hit the uh, subscribe button so you can never miss out on a lesson of God's word where I post a video. And I'll make, I'll make it let you know. Don't get cut on your notification sound. If you want to hear the true meaning of God's word from the Bible, we can all grow together. If you don't understand something, you go to my website. It's at soundteachingofthewordofgod.com. That's soundteachingofthewordofgod.com. Hit contact button. Put your information in there, your questions, your information, and send it to me. And trust me, I will get right back to you. It might not be that uh, same uh, hour, but trust me, that hopefully that day I get right back to you. Or you go to my email. That is sound underscore uh, doctrine at yahoo.com. Sound underscore doctrine at yahoo.com. If you have any questions, send it to me, and I will get back to you. If you, if you believe in saving of your soul, and you believe in caring about your life, and caring about your eternal life, and having, and having making your election sure come judgment day, please, 
I, 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 I warn you, and I beg you, stay in God's word. If you have any questions, just contact me. I see, I'm not, one thing about me, a lot of people are afraid to tell the truth and, and talk to people telling the truth, maybe because they scared they might lose members at their church or they scared they might not, uh, people stop coming, but no. I teach the word of God strictly for the Bible. So when I said for the God, God, I talk your word comes judgment day. Your word, what your word says, not what I believe in my heart, but what your word says. That just, I love my brothers and sisters out there, whether I know you or not. I'm just trying to help y'all as God grow me in his word. I try to share it to those who really want to hear the truth. Okay. And the last one we had at 1 Corinthians chapter 1. I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 1 through 15. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 1 through 15. That is 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 1 through 15. You might read that for me. That might stop you. All right. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with ex excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preachings was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Hold for a second, please. Mm -hmm. Your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men. What men mm -hmm. say, man say this, my pastor say this, my preacher say this, my minister say this, my, they say, this. I said, do this, do that, do that, do that, no, uh -huh. We should stand in the power of God. They break this down to you, Hebrews, Chapter 4, verse 12. That's Hebrew chapter 4, verse 12. Clearly, clearly tells us, clearly tells us that uh, 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 Jesus Christ, the word of God is quick and powerful than any two-edged sword. The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than two-edged sword. It tells us that. It also tells us that I'm not speaking with man-made wisdom. I speak with the wisdom of God. For uh, Romans chapter 1 verse uh, 16. That Romans chapter 1 verse 16. Paul wrote. He is not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it's the power of God. To salvation. To those that believe. Once again. Paul wrote. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. And it's the power of God. It's the power of God to salvation to those that believe. That's why the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians, uh, 2 Thessalonians, excuse me, 2 Thessalonians uh, chapter 2 and uh, verse 13. Forgive me. That's 1 Thessalonians. That's 1 Thessalonians. Chapter 2 and verse 13 tells us the word of God works to those that believe. And it's the power of God. That's 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. Please read these scriptures for yourself. Don't take my word for it. Just read it for yourself. Because there's too many people out here right now in this day are deceiving people, or lying to people. And I talk to people. I'm like, whoa, I can, what church they're actually going to, they are getting deceived by man. And man, man putting anything, everything in their head, but, but not holding the word of God. Not staying with the word of God. I ain't gonna do no good come judgment day. The Bible teaches that. And I say things because the Bible teaches that. You better stay with the word of God because the word of God is what saves us. Baptism does not save us if we believe in Jesus Christ. That's why the Bible says the word of God works to those that believe. Now, if you believe it, baptism does not save us, like it says in the book of Peter, it does not save us if I believe in Jesus Christ. Well, Jesus Christ said, you got to believe and be baptized. Mark 16, 16. You got to believe and be baptized. Water baptism. Believe. The word of God works with those that believe and be baptized. Hmm. If you stay with the word of God, stay with the word of God yourself. I know millions of people out here know these things. You know, right? Stay with the word of God yourself. You'll see for yourself. Because I saw for myself. I'm like, whoa, I am in a church. I have been deceived. 
because I stay in the Word of God myself. And I'm like, before we keep up, if I keep up going, I never get a long time ago. A preacher had told me, he had told me that. He said, Terry, I know if there ain't nobody else in the church listening, I know you the one that listens to what I'm saying. I never forget that. He came out and told me because I always questioned what he was saying because it don't match up with the Bible. So I always questioned him, came to him, not try to put him down there like that, but put him to the side and talk to him. He had told me that one day that if nobody else in this church, it was a bunch of people at that time, I don't know what it is now, is listening, I know you're the only one that's listening. Because why? You always ask me questions. And this is my eternal soul, and I'm not going to take it for granted for nobody. I'm not going to play with it for nobody. I'm not going to let nobody just tell me anything. And this is my eternal soul. I want a eternal life. And while I'm doing what, that's why I teach strictly from the Bible. I teach strictly from the Bible what the Bible says. Because I won't do what God had me to do, not what man had me to do. I'm sorry, you keep on reading it for me, please. Um, verse 6. <clears throat> How be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Stop for a second, please. Stop for a second, please. God prepared for them that love him. You know what? What did Jesus Christ say? If you love me, do what? Keep my word. You know what? You know what? Right there. If you love me, keep my word. And my Father will love you. Reason why? Because in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. So if I keep your word, you know, I right? keep Jesus Christ's word, then God the Father gonna love me. You know, I right? God the Father gonna love me. Your son gonna love you. I'm keeping his word. He is the word. So I mean, it's so I mean it's clear if you stay in God's word. Now we got we, we read it right there, because we said people don't know. What does it say again, please? Read it for me. But what he said that love him. Okay, but as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. How can I show God I love him only by doing what? Keeping his word. Keep that's how I show I love him. So why people mix with Christmas with the Bible? I had a slightest idea. People out here believe that I'm going to have because I celebrate God's birthday. I'm going to buy everybody this, buy people this, buy this. Oh, all through this, all through this, all through the year, I see it. But okay, uh, Christmas time, put a form of God in this on, and I'll be nice to people. It's terrible, and that's what gets preach out here, minister out here. Because I, 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 like I say again, I have seen it with my own eyes, I heard it with my own ears. I've seen this before, and I'm like, whoa, and what's going on here right now? Are you talking to people like, whoa? I'm not judging nobody like that. I just want to know why when people out here would teach God's word like that, you know what? Right? But the Bible said that we got ministers of Satan out here. That's the Corinthians. Okay, keep you on reading for us, please. Mm -hmm. But God hath revealed hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. I was say, hey man, I'm not we uh, receive the Spirit of this world. Who is that? Satan. Mm -hmm. All right? But the Spirit of God, because we know what things are freely given to us. And how? By this. We know that. Mm -hmm. Kind of words of what? Spirit. Then Christ said that in Gospel of John 6, 62 to 63. In Gospel of John chapter 6, 62 to 63. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. Jesus Christ said these words himself. So if I had a word in me, I should have a spirit in me. Don't let no man deceive you out here. Stay with the word of God. Know how God is actually in you. 
Matter of fact, Peter would say, I mean, I mean, Paul would wrote in 2 Corinthians 13, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, that uh, you better examine yourself to see or you are in the faith. Faith can by hearing the word of God, Romans 10, 17. Prove your own self to God. If you don't know how, how Christ is in you, then you must got a reprobated mind. If you think Christ is in you any other way, only by the word of God, you have a reprobated mind. That's what Paul's saying. That's what I'm writing about right now. You have a reprobate mind, and you think God in you any other way about the word of God, that you don't know God. But Jesus Christ will take vengeance of those who do not know God, 2 Thessalonians 7 through 9. He'll take vengeance of those who do not know God. That's 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, 7 through 9. Excuse me. Please, please, please. Okay, verse 13. Mm -hmm. Which things also we speak not in the wor words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. One more time, Father. One more time, please. The Father, the Word, the Holy Ghost, all three in one. So I got the Word in me. Who teaches me? The Holy Ghost. And they all three in one. If that Word is in me, then the Holy Ghost is in me. And He's teaching me. Teach me what? The Spirit of God's Word. He teaches me the Spirit of God's Word. Okay. <laughs> All right, verse 14. Mm -hmm. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. Because the natural man, he don't understand, he don't have the word of God in him, he don't have the spirit in him. We got the word of God, he ain't got the spirit in him. They don't understand. They don't understand. You try to teach them, they don't understand, they don't believe them. Because why? Because they are spiritually stern, because they are natural. That means they have not the spirit of Christ in them. Because they don't have the word of God in you. You got the word of God in you, you have the spirit of Christ in you. Trust me, I, prom I promise you that. You stay with scripture. Start the book at Matthew, all the way through Revelation. Just stay in the scripture. And you'll see for yourself that's read over and over and over again. Don't just read one scripture and say, that's all I can do, right? If you got time for anything else out here in this world, you got time to, to uh, get up and take a shower, ain't nothing wrong with that. You got time to brush your teeth, got time to go get, get, uh, get ready to go to work, whatever you do out here. You got time for it. Make time for the word of God and spend time with him. Stay in his word and grow and ask for wisdom and knowledge and understanding. And the, and, and, and the best part of it is you got to make sure you obey. If you ain't obeying, it ain't doing nothing. And like you have a kid out here, you, know, you, know, you tell him to do something, they ain't doing it. They ain't obeying you, it's not doing nothing. You got to be obedient and you got to obey. If you care about your eternal soul, eternal life, and you, and, and you, and, and, and you, and you want eternal life, and you believe in saving other soul, I believe in saving other soul, like the Bible says. And my life had never would have changed back then. My life would never would have changed. And I said, well, you know, something ain't right. But my life has totally changed through the Word of God. Totally changed through the Word of God. Do I still have a problem? Yes, I do. Do I still, I'm still working on it? Yes, I am. But my life has totally changed through the Word of God. So I'm here to just teach the true meaning of God's Word. Like I said, I left all my information for you. So if you have any questions, whatever, you can contact me. I have no problem with that at all. And I trust me, if I can answer it, I will answer. If I can't, I'm not. I'm not going to tell you anything. I'm answering strictly from what the word of God says. Okay, once again, for those out there who are uh, going through a terrible time out of the virus, I am so sorry. For those who go through poverty, I am so sorry to hear that. But stay strong, never give up. For those who go through anything out here right now, stay strong. Wear your mask. Keep safe. Do what they tell you to do for the company, your, your, uh, your health. You know, it's terrible. We got people out here saying, well, we got to wear a mask. Don't do this and do this. It's, it's terrible how people will tell others, you know, right, then the people will be following behind it. We got people out here right now who try to steal the election. What happened to election? People try to steal the election. So you know people steal for you. <laughs> no, I, they try to steal the election. People out here try to steal the election. It's so terrible out here right now. It's so much evil that's there. I mean, it always been racism, but it got so bad. And back then it was racism, but it, I mean, it came back with a vengeance. It's so bad out here right now. I mean, it's so much evil, hatred, lying, and backbites. 
employ you. This is what they tell you to do. Put masks over your face, stay six feet apart, whatever they tell you to do for your health. I love all my brothers and sisters out there. I want y'all to stay safe. And so we get a closing prayer. I just want to say thank y'all for everything in closing. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, Lord, Savior Jesus Christ, once again, we thank you for allowing us to come together to worship you in spirit and the truth, dear Lord. We know that a lot of people out here who are, are missing because they're going through a lot. We can't go to church. and can't, can't uh, gather together, dear Lord. We can't come here to this building to worship you, dear Lord, because it's a virus. And I, it's understandable, dear Lord. But I pray, Father God, that you help them watch over them and, and give them things that are vital they need. And give them strength, dear Lord, whatever they're weak, Father God. Keep them safe. But those who are the poverty as well, help them, dear Lord, to overcome what they're going through right now, dear Lord. Give them food and, and keep their light, lights on, dear Lord. Keep them in their house, Father God, to get kicked out on the street, dear Lord. Help them, dear Lord. Mm -hmm. And I pray for them all, Father God. And I pray, dear Lord, that they don't shy away from you, dear Lord. They have lost faith, dear Lord, when they come back to the faith, which is your word. And stay fast in your word. Never give up on the internal service. That's what Satan wants. He wants us to crumble. He wants us to give up. Help us to stay strong, Father God. Keep doing things that are always acceptable and pleasing in your sight. And never give up on eternal life, dear Lord. Never give up on eternal life or eternal soul, Father God. So we thank you for everything. Thank you for all the things you have done for us, Father God. Whether it rain or the bad or the, and only good, Father God. We thank you for everything, dear Lord. We know things are going to happen. We, we, what your son came out here, he had died. You, you allowed bad things happen to your son. He came out, he got crucified on the cross with conscious bad to tell us that bad things gonna happen to us. But we thank you for everything, Father God. I pray for those out here who teach the gospel, and they keep on teaching the gospel from your word, and never give up, stand strong. And for those out here uh, listening, uh, Father God, I pray that they listen. Continue in the faith, like it says in book, uh, Colossians 1 to 23. Uh, continue in the faith, which is your word. Stay strong and never give up on eternal life. We thank you, dear Lord, for everything. And without the spirit of you inside of us, we would not have eternal life. So please help us to understand that. And your divine, holy, almighty, wonderful name. We thank you for everything. Amen. Amen. Once again, stay safe out there. Never give up on eternal life. And God bless you all.